Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a, a children's book. I don't review many children's books, but I thought this one was uh, interesting from a number of different points of view. I've got a, a certain um, familiarity with what Cathy uh, Masano has written about. Uh, she was at one time one of uh, my neighbours here in Richmond, although I don't think we have ever met. Um, <clears throat> but we certainly know various places that we've talked about by email. She lives in Australia. The book is called Whitehaven Beach, and it's the first of the Paradise Beach Mysteries. I thought it was a really rather nice book for uh, children, and it's been edited by Rosemary Bickle. Now, it's, it's published by the Right for Children organisation, and the book, the title that we've given our book review is an easy to read modern adventure for, 20, for the 21st century, which is an inspiring pleasure to read for children today. Let me just show you the book first. It's a paperback, it's only a very slim book. There we go. And you can see the little, what we call the spine, and then a the little bit of the stuff on the back. There's a little bit of wording you can read there, and you can see the book. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for you, it's not a big book. 95 pages, there's the back of it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but telling you too much about it, except for really what she's said about the book in her introduction. I would, would like to just do that, because I always like to show the dedication. I think that's very important. And then you can see the book itself. It just opens up. There's some contents chapters there. 19 chapters in total, and then a lot of dialogue, actually, throughout. Uh, setting the scene. And you, <clears throat> it is very much, I think, a, a children's story for the 21st century, which is what I've said. What do I say about it? This, it's always a pleasure to review children's books. And we welcome Cathy Masano's exciting story, Whitehaven Beach, which we are sure will provoke a great deal of interest and curiosity to a younger modern readership. And I'm aware that a lot of younger people today like to see these videos and get an idea of what the book is about because it's direct communication visually. And I think that's that's important today because this is obviously the written word. We do not, of course, do spoilers, as I've said before. So with our review <clears throat> in mind, do read what Cathy actually says about the Paradise Beach Mysteries series. There are three of them to date, which starts with this one, Whitehaven Beach. Uh, the imagery and inventiveness uh, are a particular joy, I felt, and the story certainly encourages and tempts readers to look for further adventures, which of course is the key to success. And it's also talking of children amongst children, rather than too much adult content, which is always, I think, the key to success with children's books. And another key to success, of course, um, is this type of book, which is actually written for children and great to get beginners to read regularly. And this is really how Cathy describes the book, so we don't give too much away in the review. It's as follows. Megan and Marcus can't wait for the summer holidays to begin at Bexhill on Sea, yes, the rain-drenched south coast of England. <coughs> this location is where their own incredible beach hut, Parry, doubles as a high-powered rocket ship. Now, I'm recording this in 2017, and we are just about to see Mr Musk talk about rocket ships, so it's pretty early stuff for rocket ships at the moment. Before long, however, just getting back to the story, our heroes are heading for Australia on a thrilling mission. Yes, the land of the marsupials. Now, as secret agents, and they're not 007s in reality, but modern ones, the two must confront a dangerous gang to try and save a beautiful beach from certain environmental ruin. A little bit of Crocodile Dundee in here, a little few of other things, and of course 007 without the sex. You'd be very pleased to hear. And all the love scenes and the love poems and everything else. So it's much more adventure orientated. So when they spot a massive crocodile mysteriously devouring all the famous white soft sand on Whitehaven Beach, things start to go seriously wrong. Now read on. Now you see that it's developing nicely. It's a nice plot. I thought the plot was really rather good. Now Marcus sees Megan being swallowed by the reptile and does not hesitate to plan a daring rescue operation. Skillfully he helps her to escape, but as they're planning how to recover the stolen sand, the thieves return and the two young agents find themselves in great danger. The question then is, will Whitehaven Beach be lost forever? Now I was actually, when I saw this, I immediately thought of the Shell Beach on Herm. 
Island in the Channel Islands. You probably don't know what I'm talking about, but in fact it has some interesting parallels. Now, the question is, is this doubtful, this story? No, I don't know, I don't think so, because secret agents everywhere are invited to step inside the amazing Bexhill on Sea beach hut of the Paradise Beach Mysteries series and join Marcus and Megan uh, Morgan as they travel at the speed of light to far away top rated world beaches in a quest to save them from environmental ruin. So you can see some splendid adventures here. I like it because it's topical as well and very much to my heart dealing with environmental issues which are absolutely fundamental especially the saving of the oceans, the problems we do have concerning the huge amounts of plastic dumped in the oceans and all these other things. Very important issues for the generations to come. Us oldies like me, you know, it's, we're all past it, but at least we've seen the mess we've been making. It's time we cleared it up. Now, let me just conclude by saying we're pleased to say that we don't know either locations mentioned in any real detail, which is probably um, <clears throat> just as well for everyone because the mass of readers may not either. So that makes the story all the more interesting for the imagery deployed. Now, I will say here that, of course, with Enid Blyton, whom I've always loved, um, I knew most of the locations because she was someone that lived very near us when I was growing up, which is a long time ago now. Um, but that's really one of the reasons why I could identify very much with Enid and her stories. But I think you can identify very much with these stories because it's, it's a rather more general a picture of the locations, the rain-soaked uh, British beaches, <laughs> English beaches, and of course the sun-soaked Australian beaches. It's a ripping good read, this one, for your summer holidays, even if the sun-soaked beaches give way as they do to rain-soaked beaches here. But that, why spoil it with some of the wretched reality when we want to get away from it all after, after all? That's the point, isn't it, of the book? So thank you, Cathy, and we look forward to the next adventure in the near future. I did like the book, as you probably gather. Here it is. It's a very easy book to read for an adult. But it's all it's the children in, in all of us coming out, you see. There we go. You can see. Now, what I do like, I'm not going to do too much. There isn't too much dialogue, um, but there's enough. Let me put it this way. Enid always excelled, I thought, at the dialogue, mainly because she, she was a teacher and she'd had that sort of expertise. But, of course... This is a lovely book in its own way, so thank you, Cathy. Do read it. Bye-bye.